rain. She is a gummy. Oh, uh, that's great for the grapes, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we need some rain. I'm not yeah. going to complain about right. it. Right. You're Just on. Just so we don't get the kind of rain that came up the East Coast last week. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit much. Um, I, ha I have a question for, for, for your, your guest. Um, nursing homes, uh, at least in our area, I have found uh, ha are ch changing quite a bit in that it used to be you went into a nursing home primarily just to die <laughs> or to die comfortably. And uh, now I see they, they have a lot of uh, rehab going on in nursing homes. And, you know, you just come in from, like, the hospitals and they do the rehab for you and you go home rather than going to a, I know, in going Erie. Going to Mason Funeral Home. <laughs> well, no, no. In, in Erie, they have what they call rehab centers. That's all they do is rehab. But I see that a lot of nursing homes have, have uh, uh, yeah. branched out. To and, and hospitals. It's a big business. Rehab is big business. There you go. You're yes, on. it is. Uh, the reason being is that medicine has improved. People are living longer. They don't need to come into a skilled nursing facility to die, so to speak, because they're out there, as Reed had mentioned, 30 years ago, uh, if a little old lady had fallen down and broken her hip, it was basically a death sentence. Um, and that's not the case anymore. It's, uh, it's basically a sort of an easy fix and uh, they understand that you need to be up and out of bed quickly so you don't develop the pneumonia and that's usually what ended up killing the people back then. But no, uh, all your nursing homes, their focus is actually more on the rehab, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. And uh, They can wait to get you later, huh? I'm sorry? They can wait to get you later. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, and actually, we'd rather get you now when uh, you're young and healthy and we can do something for you. Uh, I think one of the things that, that people don't realize is that rehab can be done at almost any age. Just because we're getting old doesn't mean we have to get, you know, slow down or get stiff or just because if we broke down and uh, we fall down and break a leg, um, you know, oh well, they're 88, why should we bother? That's not the case. If these are people who were up and about before, then there's every reason to get them up and about now. It's not about the age, it's about the ability. Uh, would you happen to know how the price of a nursing home rehab is, as I know, as opposed to staying in the hospital, that probably the hospital would be a lot more, but... Uh, you couldn't stay in the hospital. Yep, that's why I understand. They're kind of pushing you out as soon as they that, can. You, you could never stay in the hospital. What you're talking about is an acute rehab, rehab facility versus a subacute. An acute re rehab facility are places like Health South and Jones Hill. Mm -hmm. um, subacute rehab is what a nursing home does. In an acute rehab facility, you need to be able to do at least three hours a day of rehab. Um, and a lot of your 88-year-olds with a broken hip really aren't able to do three hours. Uh, we usually give you at least an hour, hour and a half of rehab, which is something that's easier to do. Um, the results are the same, uh, oddly enough. Uh, yeah, we get odd. people up and out and doing very well. Well, that, uh, that, uh, that kind of answered my question. Well, thank you, caller. Send me a... Stamps of uh, Subject Envelope. I'll send you $5 off at that lovely little restaurant at the foot of the hill, maybe all the Lakeview, and also now the docks. Okay, and one more thing. Mm -hmm. To all the children that will be returning to school in the following week, uh, I wish the very best. Okay, and watch. <laughs> look both ways when crossing. Thank oh, yes. you. Absolutely. Thank you, Bye-bye. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, we, uh, there, uh, there's one more thing that we should mention, and that is... Uh, you, uh, even though uh, it's very hard to get in a nursing home, you have to. It's not uh, that hard to get in. Well, uh, on Medicaid, because uh, the Medicaid you are limited. You have so many beds, you are required yes. by law mm -hmm. to give to Medicaid. And you ain't going to put any extras in because you lose big money yeah. on every one. So those beds are always filled. The only way you're going to get in is somebody's got a croak, and then you got to, or I don't know, does somebody run away. I don't think that's going to happen. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so it's not easy to get in on Medicaid. You can get in easily enough on private pay, which pays about twice what Medicaid pay, pays, even more in yeah. some cases. So you better save when you give, your, first of all, I advise everybody over 60 to give all their money to their kids, because there's going to be a take-back period. As we mentioned, it's five years now. That means that Medicaid, five years later, if you go and need Medicaid, can say, wait a minute, you did have a lot of money. You gave it away intentionally to avoid paying so that Medicaid would pay. And so we want to find that money, and we want it. And, and they'll find it, and they'll take it. And they'll find it. They will look right up your own... Um, 
Uh. Well, you, you, well, <laughs> you need to provide them with uh, the last five years of uh, all your checking accounts. Uh, they need marriage records. If you're in the service, uh, your discharge uh, records, they, they require a lot. But oh. again, you know, they're not getting funded by the federal government uh, as they used to. They're not paying the way they used to. Oh, they yes, need the money. No question about it. They, they need the money. And uh, I remember it's understandable. the governor Pataki said, you know, well, uh, this is just a, w a way of making the state pay for your kid. His father went under, and he took all his money and trust who was a Muslim in the unit and put him in the same sort of situation. He's, mm -hmm. he, he was in a fireman's home. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's doing it. Don't feel bad about it. Save what you can for your children, and then just figure the end is coming anyway. Big deal, <laughs> right? Uh, Leslie Flexer talking to us about uh, nursing homes in general, and uh, I just wanted to mention one other thing everybody should have that we haven't going to touch on, a will, a real will, not yes. a living will, a will, because it makes it very expensive, very difficult, and you, God knows what's going to happen to half your dough with lawyers and everything if you don't have a very nice, good, tight will. Mm -hmm. You can write it yourself. But it's not, it, it, the, if it's complicated, you're down the tubes probably. If anybody litigates, if you trust your family, you can write, you can just get one of the forms and fill it in. I don't advise that. Have your lawyer look it over anyway. He's going to charge you 50 bucks or something just to look at it and say, hey, it looks okay to me. But make sure you designate property to who you want to get that property, to whom you wish to get yes. that property. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Fuller, my eighth grade English teacher. Uh, and uh, make sure that the, 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 it's properly testified to. In other words, take it to a, you know, any legal document. Uh, you have a choice of having two witnesses or whatever, or you can have a, 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 a public uh, notary do it. Have the notary do it. Mainly because you never have to find her again. She can go off and die, and it doesn't matter. Her seal is there. She saw you sign it, and that's that. If uh, I had Leslie, uh, look at my, uh, be it uh, one of my testimony, witnesses to my will. If it's lovely pa passes on or she's out in Timbuktu, they can't find her or whatever, uh, <laughs> yes. and I die, there's no proof that this is what I wanted. If one of my kids says, hey, he wanted to have me have this and all that, you know, there's, there's yes. litigation. As long as there's no litigation, nobody cares anyway. Mm -hmm. But three things we mentioned that you should have. A will, a real will. A health care proxy, which is, uh, could have a living will with it, uh, which means you designate exactly what you want and not want done. Mm -hmm. And you have, but the proxy says, here's Joe, or my son is going to determine what happens to me if I can't. And uh, I'm telling him right now, I want him to pull the plug. I don't want to lie there for months in, in a coma and a, a wait, waiting to die and in agony sometimes, even though they do morphine you up so where you're almost unconscious. I don't need this. I don't want it. It's a terrible waste of our facilities, our money, mm -hmm. your money, public money, and I, it, all it does is prolong my agony. I want to die, you know, so there's a time to die. God is calling you. Come home yes. to the great feast and uh, the great peace. So there you go. Get those things done. And don't fool around. And also make sure you have the durable power of attorney so that during the interim, your kids can take care of your affairs, any financial affair. You're right. right. Um, yeah, those are all very important things. Uh, as far as choosing nursing homes, uh, the time to choose is not the time when you need. Uh, they're all over the place. Uh, just give a call. Say, I'd like to come over and take a tour of your place. And you really need to. You need to feel comfortable with where your parents or, uh, you know, whoever you're caring for. It's not always parents. I have people who care for aunts, uncles, grandparents. Um, take a tour. Take a look. Uh, you're looking for cleanliness. You're looking for uh, how, how's the staff? Uh, is there one person to 50 or is there, you know, four or five to 50? Um, one, how of well th one of the things that impressed me, you told me last time I saw you, was smell. Yes. The smell is very important. Yes, it is. The first thing you should do is, is lead with your nose. Um, it tells you a lot. Uh, see how the staff interacts with the, with the residents. Are they friendly? Are they cold? Um, you know, get a feel for the place. Uh, I know that where we are, we have a, a very uh, relaxed atmosphere. A lot of people like that. Um, we try to make it as homey as possible. 
Uh, at our facility, you're allowed to decorate your rooms any way you want. You're not always allowed to do that at other facilities. You, you don't wear uniforms. You wear whatever you want, right? Well, I do, but the uh, no, the nursing staff no, still no, wears. I'm talking about the folks. Though. Oh, the folks! Oh no! Oh my goodness! You wear whatever you want, <laughs> um, as long as you're kind of covered. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, we we usually don't allow birthday suits streaking down the hallway. Uh, oh, well, I reminds me of the gag. Gertie is at dinner and holds her hand up and says, anybody can guess what's in my hand? I'll spend the night with you. And Charlie yells out, an elephant! She says, close enough, Charlie, I'll see you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, you, you should go see them. Ask questions. Uh, that's how you're going to find out. Uh, we have, we're online. Most of the skilled nursing facilities should have an online spot that you can go and see as well. But I just encourage you to go see and get a feel. Talk to people who've been there or talk to people who are there. Um, and, you know, get a feel for it. Do they like it? Do they like the food? Do they like the care? Um, what are the policies? Are they allowed to have pets visit, as, as we do allow? Um, and outside, children, uh, grandchildren. Outside activities, yes, too. Yes, we, ha we know, are I full see, of activities. See, I see them going up to the park yes, often and yes. uh, all kinds um, of things. We have happen. a very busy activities program. There's always something going on. Uh, there's no reason to be bored. Uh, it's as much or as little as our residents would like to do. So you really need to to check it out. Uh, you know, everybody always hopes that the, you know, the emergency department is there or the fire department or the EMS <laughs> department is there. Um, You're out of here. Oh, wow. We just got the, I just got the word. <laughs> you just got the word. I want to give you 30 seconds just to close off. Okay. Um, be prepared. The old Boy Scout thing. Okay. Be prepared. Uh, we're all going to get old. You need to understand that you need certain documents. Uh, like your health care proxy, your, power of, your durable power of attorney. Check out what's available in your community. Um, we here in Chautauqua County, I think, are very lucky. We have several good skilled nursing facilities. I happen to believe that we have the best, and the Department of Health obviously backs me up because we're the only five-star facility in Chautauqua. And you want, um, you're the best in the state in yes, this area. Yes, yeah. Uh, no question about it. Yeah. Leslie Flexer. Thank you very much, Leslie. Thank you, Reed. For coming in and sharing my pleasure. a few things. Will you come back sometime? Of soon? course I will. Good, because uh, I'm beginning to feel a little decrepit now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only, uh, I'm only 72, guys. I'm just a kid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank all those special people out. Sorry, caller, our last caller we didn't get you. We'll get you next time. Uh, I want to thank Chuck Kelsey, Devin Taylor, Chris Bird, Randy Bird. Chris Ramaker, Jeff Zook, who's doing two men's work. What a job he's doing. Don Zenz, John Hamels, and occasionally Dan Berg. And all those people out there who view the show and watch it, I will be on vacation for three weeks. John Hamels will be doing the job. Be good to him. Call him and have a great time. May all that is proud and true and noble abide with you. I'm Reed Powers. <laughs>